a few tips for color work. Much like continental knitting, I like to keep my work more bunched up on my left needle so that way it's easier for me to get a nice fluid knitting style throughout the stitches. It's important not to change your tension too much from working color work knitting to regular knitting. Um, you will notice that it will be a bit looser, but that's totally normal and you kind of want that because when you knit color work, you are going to be creating these little floats behind your work that need room to stretch when your, pro when your project is off the needles. So don't be too worried at first if your tension is way looser than normal. It's better to be too loose than too tight. You can always um, practice with your tension, create a little bit more tension throughout your hand here. Some people like to wrap the yarn around their pinky finger one time if that helps you. Um, by all means, please feel free to do that. Also, as you knit, push these stitches on your right hand needle apart and create a little bit of loose tension behind your work. And then that way you are creating a looser float as you, as you knit rather than waiting to the end of your project and hoping that it all blocks out. Another tip is, especially when knitting your first color work sweater, when you complete your sweater work, when you complete your yoke of your sweater, rather than continuing to knit on and knit all the stockinette of the body of your sweater, simply take your knitted yoke off of your needles and use this light steam iron with obviously with a, um, like a say a cotton handkerchief or a t-shirt between your knitting and the iron. Don't directly put the iron on your knitting, but use the steam function to steam out your knitting, which is kind of like a faux block. It allows the stitches to relax, and then that way you can make sure that your stitches are nice and flat. They're not puckering or sticking out from the work in any way, which allows you to know that your floats are perfectly Evened, evenly tensioned across the back of your work and you won't have any fit issues. And I like to do that even now. I still like to do that before knitting an entire body of a sweater. So that way I can make sure that my floats are perfect and my color work is going to lie nice and flat. There's not going to be any tight puckering. And as you can see here, it's just a, a nice perfectly flat piece of knitting um, and the motif just looks beautiful um, knit in this fashion. So a few other tips when you're knitting your color work. Get in the habit of tensioning with your middle finger and your thumb. We went over this in class. You can pull down on the strands here to create a bit more tension when getting back into starting position. Say you had to put down your work. Um, that's a really easy way to tension ratchet back up your, your work. And again, as you're knitting and catching your floats, make sure that you're paying attention to the orientation of the stitch. The previous round, if you caught um, your background color, so if, for example, if on the previous round I did one of these little swoopity swoops to catch my background color, the um, stitch is twisted on the following round. You can see here, here's one that I knit and it's twisted on my needle, so all I do is just knit through the back loop on that. And I, I like that it twists like that because it gives me a reminder, a cue, if you will, that I caught my float on that stitch in the previous round so I don't do it again two times in a row. Because as I said in the previous video, if you catch your floats too many times in the same place, it creates this laddering effect here, which will appear on the front of your work. It will create a little ladder a laddering effect to the stitch. It's hard to see in this, this really fluffy DK weight, but if you were knitting, a, say, a finger, you can see a little bit more here. If you were knitting a fingering weight sweater, you would definitely notice. So I advise, and I like that in this particular method, it does twist a stitch on the previous round where you caught the float, your background color, where you caught the background color. It will have a twisted stitch, and I like it because it reminds me, hey, don't catch your float on that same stitch because it creates this funky little jog in the front of your work. So again, when you reach that stitch, if it's twisted, you can definitely tell you'll feel it mounted on your left needle the incorrect way. Um, just knit through the back loop 
and that way like here we go here's another little twisted stitch that I caught the float on the previous round right there so I just go in and go boop knit through the back loop no biggie and I would just knit a few more stitches before I went in and caught my float again and then that avoids any kind of weird little color work snafus so that is how you use the Norwegian knitting thimble I hope you guys liked my video. I hope this gives you the tools you need to ex further explore this technique. I think it's really, really fun. There's so many great patterns out right now. The possibilities are endless. If you have any questions or you need anything else, please feel free to respond via email and I can um, uh, help you out in any way. And again, thank you for attending my class at Starlight Knitting Society. And I really hope you guys go forth and practice and don't give up and keep on that tension. I know it can be hard. And thank you again and happy knitting, everybody.